Hello and good evening, interminglers. It's evening here in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire for me. I know we have people all around the world with all different time zones, but um, I thought I would jump online with the beginning of the um, Love Cow and um, show you a, a, a few things that um, might be pertinent to you as you begin this cow. Um, things like you know, what yarn I chose, you know, and what hook I chose and, and why I chose the hook. And, and um, more importantly, how to approach the foundation rows if you haven't already uh, mastered that. Um, the foundation rows of the Love Cow are a little bit different than um, the prior um, uh, modular blocks that we've been doing. They are the same in that they are all woven, but they are not um, woven in exactly the same uh, pattern. Um, so I thought we could go over that today. So let's start with um, yarn choice and what I chose. I chose to do mine in the um, ZZ Twist, the Lion Brand ZZ Twist here. And that is labeled as a worsted weight yarn with the number four classification. Um, that being said, it also prescribes a, um, saying a, a J hook, but there is no way that I will use a J hook on this because though it is classified as a worsted, this is a light worsted at, at, at best. So I am using a, um, an H hook on this and I actually feel like it's a little bit large. Um, let me see, I think I, no, I'm actually using an I hook on it um, and it is definitely feeling a little large for me, but I'm, um, I'm pretty happy with the drape of the product. So I'm gonna stick with the, the I hook that I've been using. Um, it's kind of a, you know, there's no rule when it comes to this. Um, you can use, you know, whatever hook size you like um, that you feel comfortable with on the yarn that you're using. Keep in mind that um, with double layered crochet like this with the intermingled mesh, the you're doubling the layers so your hook really you know, can go up a size from what the um, skein label says. Uh, again, this said J, I jumped up to an I, that's a little bit loose, but I'm happy with how the, the product is looking, so I'm okay with that. But if it says an H, maybe you might want to consider a J. If you're in a DK and it says an F, or let me see, here's a DK. If it's a, if it's a DK and it says that the recommended hook is a G. Maybe you want, might want to go to an H on it. And this one here says a G. So maybe you might go, want to go to an H, that's a DK. Um, personally on the DKs that I've done, I have standardly used an F hook. Um, so it really just depends on the yarn that you're using and how it it works up. Um, it doesn't hurt to do a little uh, gauge swatch of your in, in just a you know a, just a very simple um, locking crochet style. Um, my project. I showed you the two colors I've chosen. I'm working with peacock and gray, just a standard uh, gray. It's kind of a steel gray, it's very pretty. This Lion Brand Z Twist has a really pretty sheen to it. Um, it's, it's lovely, really. And the drape of this uh, that I'm getting on this with the eye cook is truly is lovely. Um, so this is where I'm at in my project. And like I said, I'm using a worsted weight and I'm using an eye hook and I'm coming along pretty well. Uh, what row am I on? Geez, I always have to ask myself that. Um, I left off here as I can see with the main color row and I know it's my main color because the very bottom edge here 
the one that the color that's at the lowest on the outer edges is the main color. Um, as you can see, all of the outlining, the lettering, and the cabling are showing up as the main color because that's how I design. I design for the main color. Um, the the gray is my contrast color, and that has one less row and one less stitch on the side here as well. Two less stitches, actually, but one less window. Um, so, yeah, it's going along nicely. And let's look at the weave. I have to tuck those little ones in. Let's look at the weave. The weave on this, on most, on the other 2020 uh, module blocks that we've been doing, my weave has uh, pretty standardly been a you know, just an under over weave. On this one here, we are actually starting with coming up through the back loop here, going over two, under one, over two, under one, over two, under one, all the way across, right? So we're doing that all the way across the project, over two, under one, over two, under one. And as a pattern state, it ends as over two. And it ends as the over two because this last stitch here, oops, sorry, this last stitch here is not truly involved in the weaving. It is um, the edge stitch, so the contrast color doesn't go out that far. Likewise, at the beginning, we came up through the first window of the main color and went over the two and under the one and the edge stitch is not truly involved in the weaving. You must come up through this first window for this particular project, for this particular weave. That will place the working yarn in back of this main color bar right here, the top um, chain of the, the row before. It'll place it behind it so um, that your weave begins correctly going up the side. Because as you can see, going up the side, we have the line here, but then we're over two under one or two under one. And we get that weave in the way that we um, end, our con end our contrast color rows, whether it's even or whether it's odd, it's the same idea. Depending on whether you went contrast color front or contrast color back, you will get your, um, your woven, you, you will get your, your weave on the edge. Um, now, so I'm gonna show you this. I clearly made a mistake there. I am not, right here, this, this, main color should be on top of my contrast to keep my weave going. It's not. So I'm not going to do it in this video, but I am going to fix this mistake, but I am not going to drop back all those rows. I will do an afterthought stitch fix. Um, I have a video on the YouTube channel for the after start thought fix, stitch fix. So go ahead and I highly recommend watching that so that you don't get distraught as you're working. If you see one, two, or even three stitches off, as long as it's not like, you know, a whole row, um, that's completely off. I suppose you could fix that the same way, but you know, it might, it might get cumbersome to do that. But if you just say like, oh my goodness, I was supposed to go over here and instead I went under. Um, you can fix, you can fix that. So that's where I'm at on my project. And like I said, when I pick this up, I'm gonna to say to myself, oh, I forgot to mark my pattern. What the, where am I at on this, on this, um, on my project? Oh no. And then, you know, might even reach out to me and say, can anyone help me? I don't know where I am on this row. Well, you're gonna be able to help other people going forward because we're gonna talk about that right now, okay? This is where we're at. Let me move my camera so that we actually see things properly here, okay? All right, so I asked myself, okay, oh my, where did I leave off, all right? Well, I know that the right side of my work um, are my even rows and that the left side of my work are my, my odd rows. But I also know that each one of these windows counts for two, two rows. It counts for my 1A, 
1B or one main color, one contrast color. This is actually my foundation rows, foundation, main color, foundation, contrast color, row 1A, row 1, row, row one main color, row 1 contrast color, row 2 main color, row 2 contrast color, row 3 main color, row 3 contrast color, row 4 main color, row 4 contrast color. Row five, main color, row five, contrast color. Row six, main color, row six, contrast color. Rows, row seven, and then row seven, main color. I have not done row seven, main color. I mean, contrast color. Row seven, main color and then your contrast color. So I know that I've done my foundation row, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven on my main color. I can see that main color was the last row I worked, so I am on row seven, contrast color, which should be on the left side of my work here. And look, it is. So I am on row seven contrast color. I need to work back across and do seven CC. Again, same thing over here. If I had been counting here, I'd be foundation one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I haven't worked number seven for this yet. If I had to be on, it would be up here at the top. So that is where I'm at. I am on row seven contrast color and now you'll be able to figure out where you left off if you didn't mark your pattern. Alrighty. Let us make a foundation row. The foundation row is a long chain. You know, it starts out and, and, and it can be tedious and it can be frustrating. Um, especially when you're working with a throw or blanket like this. With the smaller modular blocks, it's not such a big deal right but with these um, larger one with these larger projects there's a lot more chaining for today's video um, tutorial here I am not going to do the entire row but I am going to do a subset so that you can see um, how it's done I am going to use uh, 12 windows versus um, the 80 87 windows, I believe it is, that you have in your, um, in your uh, pattern. I also want to say that I'm going to start with the main color, and my main color is my darker color. Some people prefer in this project particularly to go with the lighter color. Um, just know which one you've chosen. But you'll be able to tell because that first bottom row is the outer edge is always whatever you've chosen for your main color and that is what's going to show up as your design that's uh, designed for in the pattern. Um, I will start with the main color being the darker color because that's typically how I do things um, and it's going to be 12 windows. In, in uh, intermingled mesh the number of, to, to know how many to chain, the, the pattern tells you, but to know how many to chain, you need to chain two times the windows plus four stitches. Um, that is going to give you your edge stitch or your, your um, you know, your, your outside, your, your first main color stitch in the row. So, oops, my yarn is actually making my video too dark. So I'm going to take it down here. There we go. And we're going to chain 28. So the first step of the foundation row is to create your, your main color chain and you can create your contrast color chain at the same, you know, right after that if you want and then go back to making the mesh. But we'll do it with the main color and then we'll do the contrast color. So 28. And this hook is way too big for this, sorry. That is an eye hook on a DK weight yarn. So I'm gonna go to a G here. Yeah. Okay. 
my goodness. Strong with our slip knot. Let's get 28. So it's 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Yay, I can count. I hope. Critical here to make sure you have the right number of chains. Um, if you have too many chains, you can actually pick them out at the other end if you really have to, but um, ideally you want to get the right number of chains. If you have too few, then you're really going to be sad because you have to go rip it all back out on the mesh and it's a long mesh. So the instructions are to start in the sixth chain from the hook. I standardly, when I'm doing this mesh, choose to use the pearl bump as opposed to looking at the chain top. I call them pearl bump because that's what it looks like in knitting. Um, and you're going to do that in the sixth chain from the hook. I will look at the front to double check that. Oh, actually, yeah. So I'm going to do that in the sixth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four, five, six. This this chain that the 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 um, chains that were the sixth chain from the hook. Let's say one. Let me just get in there so I don't lose, lose my spot again. Okay. You wouldn't want to do this always, but you want to, I do it on the edge because I like to get that chain to stay at the outer edge of the, um, of the piece for when I do my border. Um, so when we do this first mesh um, stitch, we're creating this first window. We're creating this first window here. And the chain six at the beginning is creating the outer, the first, the first main color stitch, and it's um, and it includes the chain one when we have that double crochet chain one, right? Um, so we'll go ahead and create that. We now have two stitches, right? We have our outer stitch, double crochet chain one. We have our outer stitch, and we have our first, our our, our second stitch of the main color. These are represented on the grid by the vertical stitches. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that across. Just double crochet chain one. That is the, the intermingled stitch. Um, I use the an F and a B instead of doing out the complete DCIB, double crochet in the front, DCIF, double crochet in the back. Remember when you're making mesh stitch to skip skip one chain and go into the next chain. So it's double crochet, chain one. And we're going to do that across and we're going to make 12 windows. I think my chain flipped over. Sorry, I did. I shouldn't be fussy about this because it's just for this learning tutorial. I hope the shadowing isn't too much here for you. Let me see if I can fix it. Twelve of them. I recognize that these videos can be a little long because we're actually practically like sitting in the living room together doing a little crochet along together. But I think to effectively do it, that's what we basically need to do, is to talk it through and to work it out together. So double crochet, chain one, all the way across. You will be doing this across your 
100 and whatever you know, stitches that you needed to chain and you will be creating 87 windows. Okay, remember that formula. If for some reason you, you wanna figure out how many you have to chain, you'll have a pattern in front of you. It is the number of windows times two plus four. I was going to do this with 27 windows at that. I started doing it this morning with 27 windows for you. And my phone, I was doing it with my phones. My phone just like uh, recorded and then it just shut off. Like I was almost done. They shut off because it completely filled up the space on my phone because it makes such a large file. And I actually have quite a bit of space on my phone. But so I decided, oh, well, I guess that's not going to work. So now I have a glass table and I've set my video camera on top of it so that you can look down at my hands in the same direction that I'm looking down at my hands. When I get to the end of this, I should have a double crochet in the last, very last chain. There is no chain one at the end, at the end of a row. Okay, it's just double crochet when you get to the last one. This is the last one, it is simply a double crochet. Alrighty. However, at this point, at the end of a row, you either just pull this up and clip it off so that it doesn't, you don't lose it, or you can go ahead and do your chain four or your twisted double crochet for your next row so that it's ready to go. But for now, I'm just going to clip this one off because it's my main chain. I'm going to set this aside for a moment. So I'm just going to set it right here on my leg. Hope it stays put. And I'm going to grab my contrast color. And pull a bunch of yarn out so I don't keep pulling at it. So done. Hopefully I still have you and I haven't put you completely to sleep. So we remember that the contrast color is one window less than the main color. So for mine, I'm doing 12 windows, so I'm going to do 11 windows for my contrast color. And I am going to say 11 times 2 is 22, plus 4 is 26. So I have to chain 26. Not too loosely, but not too tightly. Definitely not too tightly. That's more important than not too loosely. So that's 3 four, five, eight, nine, ten. When you are doing this on a really long chain, it may behoove you to mark off um, the, the chains at intervals with a locking stitch marker. That's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and we said 26. If you, if you mark them off every, you know, 20 stitches or so, you know, you won't find yourself going back um, to to recount every, <laughs> recount them all the time. So to, our next step on, is going to be to weave this into our foundation row, into our uh, mesh, our main color mesh. So I'm locking off that loop so I don't lose it. I love these little uh, clips. So here's our, here's our chain. Like I said, you'll have a much longer one, but we're doing it, it's the same principle. We are going to take this and we are going to weave it into our mesh. Some important factors here. Your, your main color mesh, when you go to weave it, your working end, your working end needs to be on your left, okay? In front of you, it's on your left in front of you. 
the right side to you is this closed end, okay? So I'm gonna set that down. I'm actually gonna move my camera so you can see where I'm at here, okay? So the working end to the left, the non-working end to the right. Let's set it down. For your contrast color, your non-working end is in your left hand and your working end is in your right hand. So it's basically, it's the opposite because you haven't worked your contrast color row yet. So you're going to work it shortly, but you're setting it up before you do and you're gonna weave it in. So you're gonna weave this in such that it's going in here from the back and it's gonna go over two, under one, over two, under one. Non-working end gets woven. So we'll take that and we'll start weaving it in. See if I can get my camera in the right place. Get my hand out of the way. Okay, so from the back, pull the non-working end of the contrast color up. Try to locate, uh, situate it such that you have your six beginning chains because you're going to double crochet, chain one into the first, into the sixth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that is going to actually be like here in over the second window of the mesh because the first window, which is where our, our contrast color stitches actually fall is like right between the two main color stitches. The first window is going to house our edge stitch for our first stitch and outer stitch or whatever you want to call it of the, the contrast um, color. So see that that chain that you made that you're not that you're doing the chain leaving for the chain six um, or chain find at five is your double crochet four chains plus your chain one right so five double crochets and then you're going to work into the sixth one um, and that needs to be placed so that it aligns in between the next two main color stitches as all of the contrast color stitches do so we're not going to start stitching yet we just need to weave this in so. Don't worry too much about where that's placed right now. Just kind of know that you're not pulling it all the way through, that you've got those extra ones at the beginning. So now we're gonna go over two and under one. And we're gonna do that all the way across. So over two and under one. Let's see if we can get this to just lay neatly. This one there, just as we get it started. Okay, over two, under one. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just grab it. Sorry, my hand's getting in your way. Over two, one, two, under one. And just do this across your whole mesh. Obviously I have a much shorter over two, under one. Really check this before you start doing your double crochet chain one in the back for your first, uh, for your foundation main color row, uh, because, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, I can pull this up a little, because you really don't want to have to keep going back. I think I did my foundation row six times, if, if, <laughs> if at all, I did six times at least because I kept weaving it wrong. That's what happens when you sip wine and try to crochet or knit even. <laughs> okay, so you can see the weave. We came under, the, from the back to the front. We went over two, under one, over two, under one, over two, under one, over two, under one. Okay, the rest of the foundation row is simply doing your double crochet your DCIB, okay, chain one. DCIB is double crochet in the back, chain one. Remember, it's the sixth chain from the hook, so we wanna make sure that these line up and let's look at it. And the other thing we wanna make sure of before we start is that our working end of our um, main color is up at the top here. It's very easy to get this twisted and not realize that you've got the bottom of the mesh flipped up. So be very aware of that, that 
this working end needs to be at the top and ready to go for the next row. Um, six chain from the hook, let me find it. Again, it's not a bad idea to mark the six chain from the hook so that you can see it readily when you go to start. One, two, three, four, five. It's this one here. I want it to line up with the second window, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it there. This is fiddly. So double crochet, chain one, back. Back means behind, behind the work, okay? We're gonna go into that chain, shadowing, shadowing, okay. We're going to go into the back here of the, the work here and just chain into that sixth chain from the hook. That is the double crochet, chain one back. Nice thing about this pattern is the entire row for you is double crochet, chain one in the back. The key thing for you is going to be remember to skip one chain, double crochet one in the back, double crochet, chain one in the back between the next window. So I did my double crochet, my chain one. Now I'm going to go ahead and do it in the next one. This is what you do all the way across. And I'm having trouble because the yarn's splitting. Don't be afraid to pull and tug this to see where your stitch is too. Um, or you, again, you can, you can put 100 markers in there if you want to mark your, the ones that you know that you have to go into if you want every other stitch to be marked. <laughs> go for it. I personally, that gives me a panic attack to see all that. So chain one, okay. So I'm afraid I'm getting more shadowing than I care for today and I apologize for that. But as you can see, that's lining up with the next window. So now my one that I'm skipping is right behind this main color. So the next one's gonna be the one right after it here. And it's actually sitting kind of in the back. So I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna look and I'll say skip one, double cross, skip this one, double crochet one in the back. Double crochet, chain, double crochet, chain one, right? So we're getting it set up. Now I'm in my fifth window. I need to skip this one and then kind of tug it a little to make sure I'm getting the right chain here and it's this one. And it's back. All of these are back, remember that. But this is kind of sitting in the front so I have to come, still be in the back, but pull it through the window to the back. The yarn is very splitty. So see how I'm pulling that back through the window? My next one's gonna be back there too because it's sitting in here in the front. So the skip one that's going right over that main color chain, the main color stitch, and there's the other one right between. And pulling it to the back of the work there. Oops, I forgot to loop, darn. Okay, so you get the gist of that. They're all double crochet in the back, chain one, DCIB, chain one. And that's all the way across. So I'm gonna go ahead and work those across. So my next one is actually sitting in the back. I'm gonna chain, skip the one that's sitting behind this main color, and then I'm gonna double crochet chain one in the one in the next. Okay, so. The white is difficult to see and maybe it wasn't a good choice for this uh, video. So my apologies for that. Kind of gives a lot of glare and along with the shadowing. So I'm gonna go ahead and work that across. 
My next one's sitting in the front because of the weave. So I'm going to skip the one that's riding over the main color double crochet and I'm going to go ahead and work it in behind the piece. The next one, we see a pattern evolving too and you can tell if you're doing it right because you'll end up having like the two together, then the one, then the two together, then the one. Um, so the next one's riding in front. So we're going to go behind the work. We're going to go into the skip one and go into the next one. Kind of pull it, tug it just a little bit through the window and go ahead and crochet it. The next one's actually sitting in the back. We can see it, see here that we're skipping one and we're going the next one. The next one will be riding in the front. So we're going to have to give it a little pull through the window to actually work it in the back. Skip that one. This is the one we're working. Double crochet, chain one in the back. Go through the next window with your hook. Grab the stitch you want. Give it a little tug to the back and go ahead and crochet it. Alrighty, we're to our last window here. Oh, yay. And it looks like my count is right. If you have like one too many or um, don't worry too much, but you know, if you've got six too many, it might be a problem. But one of the key things is to look at this and make sure that everything looks right in the back and make sure that it looks like this, where you've got your double crochets lining up between two main color windows. Somewhere here I may have not have skipped a chain, but it's going to be fine um, because I'm going to put a border on this, but I think they're all okay anyway. This one here looks like I may not have skipped a chain there just because it's a little tighter. But here's our, our tail, right? This is our last stitch. It's our last, it's our um, last contrast color stitch and it is also a double crochet chain one in the back. So just like the other one, the tail is last, the last stitch here is going to be done in the back. So we're pulling it to the back, but of course it's there anyway if you stuck it through the window when you did the weave. And then that's it. Okay, I don't have any extra stitches. I could draw this up because my net and the next place I'm going is to um, one MC row one MC, and then I'll do which will be the main color, right? I'll turn this over and I'll start working the chart. Well, not the chart, I'm sorry. If you're doing the written instructions, you're just going to start with row one MC. At the end of the foundation row, the color, the, um, the contrast color foundation row, it says to turn the work TWCC, either B or F. At the end of every contrast color row, you will have an instruction to TWCC dash B or TWCC dash F. This is critical critical for setting the weave on the side of your pattern. So again, that's critical. Every contrast color row will have that ex except for the very last one where you end, end off the contrast. So you turn your work and in this case you want to drop your contrast color to the back. What that is going to do is it's going to put it in the place in place where it needs to be so that that main color bar that we saw is either you know in front of it or in back of it when it gets worked. In this case, it we want, but it's for the next row of the main color. So the next row of this main color is um, mesh for the weave is actually going to be white. It's going, you know, it's going to be the contrast riding over two, 
over two under one, right? So we want to bring this to the back so that it's here and it can ride over, uh, not even in the thing here. We want it when we, when we turn it, we want to drop it to the back so that it's actually there to ride over the main color um, row the next time. So turn the work, drop your contrast color to the back or front, whatever the directions say, which in this case it is back. And then go ahead and chain, do, remember there was no chain one at the end, go ahead and chain four for the beginning of your next row. I personally prefer to do a twisted double crochet. It gives a more solid edge. I have a video on that, on you know keeping tidy edges. Feel free to watch that. If you do the twisted double crochet, you do have to chain one. Otherwise, it's just your chain four. And then proceed with your instructions. I'm not going to work through this row, but I just wanted to get you to the point where it's turn the work, TWCC contrast color back for this foundation row. Follow the directions for whether it's front or back. And then just work your contrast color, I mean, I'm sorry, your main color stitch, your next main color stitch, in which case this one is going to be a, a, a double crochet back for the main color because it's going to create the, the red border, woven border, the solid line that goes up with the border. Okay, so that was a double crochet in the back, DCIB, chain one. That is it. Let me show you the front of this. This is what happened when I did the turn the work and contrast color to the back. When I go to work this, then it, this uh, contrast color, it's already back here so that it can ride over that main color that we just stitched. That was a lot of talking and I hope it was helpful. I really know, I really understand how frustrating the foundation rows can be, but I am truly a fan of the woven because everything is nicely in place and you don't have to do a border when you do this because it's, it's attached. If we didn't do this, these two edges would not be attached and it would be sloppy and I wouldn't like it, but um, in any case, so yeah, that's where we're at, and I hope you enjoy this pattern, and I will see you in the group. Thank you very much.